Hello, colleagues. My name is uh, Dr. Sapta Nakwi. I'm a consultant endocrinologist at the Imperial College London Diabetes Centre in Abu Dhabi. I'm going to talk to you today about the twin cretin GIP GLP1 combo. I'm very grateful to the International Society of Endocrinology for providing me with this opportunity and to be part of this educational initiative. GLP-1 analogs are now in use for over a decade, and we are all well aware of their beneficial effects on glucose lowering and weight management. More recently, their cardio and renal protective uh, effects are more evident, and they are increasingly used for these conditions. We are now entering the era of combination peptides, and the first in this class is the combination peptide GLP-1 GIP analog tazapatide, which indeed offers a new paradigm in the treatment of type 2 diabetes and obesity. Now let's look at the uh, gut pancreas axis and the incretin signaling. The nutrient load in the intestine triggers the release of GIP and GLP-1 from the intestinal K and L cells respectively. These incretins then signals to the pancreatic islets and enhance insulin production. This incretin, this incretin effect is a major contributor to the regulation of postprandial glucose and responsible for nearly 70% of the insulin production post meals. The syncretin effect is reduced in patients with type 2 diabetes. In addition to their incretin effect, the peptides have a complementary role at the level of the central nervous system. They reduce food intake and promote weight loss. GLP-1 increases nausea, while GIP reduces it. At the level of the pancreas, they both increase insulin secretion GLP-1 reduces glucagon, while GIP-1 increases glucagon. The cumulative effect is that glucagon is reduced. At the level of stomach, GLP-1 slows gastric emptying, and GIP at the subcutaneous tissue level increases insulin sensitivity. Tazapatide is a long-acting GIP receptor and GLP-1 receptor agonist. The peptide sequence in these peptide is very similar to the native GIP, but it binds to both GIP and GLP-1 receptor. Its affinity for the GIP receptor is very high and almost five-fold less for the GLP-1 receptor. The mean half-life is five days. So weekly dosing is possible, and it is licensed for treatment of type 2 diabetes and weight management. If we look at the mechanism of action of this twin cretin, then at the level of the central nervous system, it promotes weight loss by reducing appetite, promoting satiety, and therefore reducing food intake. It reduces liver fat content, at the level of the pancreas, it improves beta cell glucose sensitivity. It increases insulin secretion and reduces glucagon secretion. It slows gastric emptying and at a systemic level increases insulin sensitivity. The drug is available in weekly doses of 2.5 to 15 milligram. Dose escalations are done on a monthly basis. Side effects are mainly gastrointestinal, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, dyspepsia, and abdominal pain. Of note are patients who are taking insulin or insulin secretagogues, where the doses of these medication need to be adjusted, as there is risk of hypoglycemia. The other side effects being pancreatitis, gallbladder disease, or hypersensitivity reactions, which are quite rare. The drug has been extensively studied for type 2 diabetes in the SURPASS clinical trial program. It was studied as monotherapy, as a two-drug combination head-to-head -head with another GLP-1 analog, semaglutide. And in the SURPASS 3 and 4 trials, 
as in two, three, and two to four drug combinations with insulin, it has also been studied with combination insulins. The SURPASS cardiovascular outcome trial is now fully recruited with more than 12,000 patients and is ongoing. If we look at the efficacy estimate, we estimate that nearly 81 to 97% of the trial participants achieved the ADA HbA1c goal of less than 7%. And nearly 23 to 62% of the patient achieved normal glycemia, a HbA1c less than 5.7%. The drug also had beneficial effects on weight loss and at higher doses, up to 12 kilogram of weight loss was seen in these trial participants. Tazapatide has also been studied for weight management in the Surmount clinical trial program. And in these trials, a 20% weight loss was seen with higher doses of tazapatide. Of note, more than 80% of the trial participants reached the weight reduction target of more than 5% and a significant proportion of patients reaching a target of more than 15% weight loss in the Surmount trials. There are further studies looking at obesity and obesity-related complications which are underway and will be reported in the years to come. To conclude, tersapatide is an agonist that targets both GLP-1 and GIP receptors. The SURPASS clinical trial program has shown a clinically relevant lowering of HbA1c and a significant and clinically meaningful reduction in body weight compared with other available therapies in patients with type 2 diabetes. The Sermon trials also shows a clinically meaningful weight loss in patients with or without diabetes. Data for cardiovascular and other outcomes is awaited. Thank you very much.